Hello, in this video, we're briefly going to discuss the kernel of a group homomorphism, and we're going to do a very simple proof. So let's start with a group homomorphism. So let f from g into h, so here g and h are groups, be a group homomorphism homomorphism. And now we're going to define the kernel of F. So define the kernel of F as, let's call it cur F. So cur F and we're going to say it's the set. So it's a subset of G. So it's all of the X's. So there are X's in G such that F takes this element X and sends it to the identity element in H. So it's the set of all X's in G that get mapped to the identity in H. So what does that mean exactly? So let's just really make it concrete. Thus, if x is in the kernel, let's think about what that means. So x is in the kernel of f. Well, what does that mean? Then that means that f of x is equal to the identity in h. So it's all the elements that get mapped to the identity. All right, now we're gonna do um, a very simple proof. So I'll call it a proposition, and we're gonna prove it. And our proposition uh, has the following. So we need a group homomorphism. So let F, let's use G and H again, from G into H, B, a group homomorphism homomorphism what a fun word and we're going to prove that if the kernel of f contains only the identity element then f is an injective function so so then if the kernel of f is equal to the identity element in G, then F is injective. Notice it's the identity element in G, right? The kernel is a subset of G, okay? It's a subset of G. It's actually a subgroup as well, but for now we're just gonna prove that if um, if, if it's equal to uh, the set containing the identity element, then f is an injective function. So let's go ahead and go through this proof. So proof. So this is an if-then statement. So if this is true, then this is true. So we start by assuming this. So I'll say suppose that the kernel of f is equal to the set containing only the identity element of G. And the claim here is that F is injective. So recall, what does it mean for F to be injective? Let me write it up here. So whenever you have X, Y, and G with F of X equals F of Y, that should imply that X equals Y. So Whenever f of x equals f of y for x, y, and g, then x should be equal to y. That's what it means for a function to be injective. That's a g there. It turned out really bad. So here, g. There we go. A little bit better. So suppose f of x equals f of y for x, y, and g. And now we have to show that x is equal to y. 
Okay, so I'm gonna make some 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 leaps here, but I, I will explain it in words. So hopefully it's not um, too difficult because you know there's certain things that you should know in order to do this proof. Things about inverses, things about groups, and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna say note f of x equals f of y. Okay, implies. And what I'm going to do now is, since, since f of y is an element in H, its inverse exists, so I can multiply this equation by f of y inverse on the right, okay, so on both sides of the equation. So this implies that f of x, I'm going to write it like this. I'll put extra parentheses here for extra clarity. And then here we have f of y, and then f of y inverse. Maybe the parentheses don't add clarity. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, so let me just write it again and drop the parentheses. So f of x, f of y inverse. And then here, um, these are inverses, right? So they're going to go away. This is equal to the identity element in H. So this is EH. That's because they're inverses, okay? And then we can use a property of group homomorphisms. So whenever you have this, watch this, you can write it like this, f of x, and this is f of y inverse. Okay, so that's a property that you can prove. Okay, it's not hard to prove, but it's important. And this is equal to the identity element in H. And then because f is the group homomorphism, we can write it like this. And again, I'm saying things in words that really should be written down. So if you're watching this video um, and you know you're doing homework or something like that you know make sure you you know you explain everything because I'm explaining it in words so um, instead of writing it down so we start with f of x equals f of y and then because f of y is an element in H and H is a group f of y inverse exists so we multiply this equation on the right on both sides by f of y inverse over here this becomes the identity element in H that's because they're inverses uh, over here, this step here, this is because uh, it's a property of group homomorphisms. And then this is because F is a group homomorphism going from here to here. And now what does this mean? Oh, look at this. F of X, Y inverse equals the identity in H. So this is an element that gets mapped to the identity in H. Therefore, this element is in the kernel. Right? This element lives inside the kernel of F. But the kernel of F contains only one element, the identity element in G. So what does that mean? That means it must be equal to that, right? So X, Y inverse is the coolest part of the proof, right? <laughs> it's equal to this. Then you can multiply on the right uh, both sides by Y, and so you get X equals Y, right? Because you would get, again, I'm skipping some steps here, right? You would get something like this. And then use associativity, uh, these cancel, you just get X, and then this is the identity, so you're just going to get Y. So a lot of stuff, a lot of steps are missing, um, but usually by the time you get to something like this, um, you're able to do it like this and just throw in some explanations like this is because it's a group homomorphism, etc. So yeah, and that proves it. Uh, so X is equal to Y. So that shows, this shows F is injective. This shows F is injective. Hopefully this video has helped someone who is learning uh, abstract algebra. Until next time, good luck.